Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to a very different sort of carol service that we're going to have this year. I do need, I'm afraid, to remind you that you cannot sing. So you can hum along behind your masks, but I do mean hum. So all the words are mm, 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 rather than anything else, if you see what I mean. But nonetheless, we hope you'll enjoy it. It is the traditional nine lessons and carols uh, with a couple of interspersed little bits and all the rest of it. And we wish you a very joyful start on this fourth Sunday of Advent to the Christmas season. Uh, there will be a collection but it will be as you go out this afternoon, uh, because we sh really shouldn't pass the collection plate around, as you probably understand. So as you go out, there is a, pl a plate at the back, and that is for our usual Christmas services. Thank you very much indeed. Two other little things. One is uh, we have a little gift for you as you go today, and that is a little comfort and joy uh, bookmark Comfort and Joy is something the Church of England is doing nationally. Uh, we are invited to go along with uh, the readings that uh, they supply, a little prayer each day of the Christmas season, the real 12 days of Christmas, of course. And you can even download those free on your smartphones. There is an app, would you believe? So I hope you're impressed. No expense spared on that one. And the other one is just to say, uh, Jill reminds me that we do have a virtual Sunday school at the moment. Uh, it's not running now till the new year, but if there are any young families who would like to partake in a virtual Sunday school, then you are extremely welcome. Jill, would you just give them all a wave as well? Have a word with Jill after the service and she'll be delighted to talk to you. Other than that, it's the obvious things, social distancing, try not to go out in a big bunch and all the rest of it, and let's all be safe together. Nicola. Ah, uh, yeah, we will be using the two doors at the back to get out, so we're trying to sort of not bunch in any shape or form. But thank you all very much indeed. We shall begin in a moment with our first carol, once in Royal David City. Uh, if you would like to stand for perhaps every other carol, it might be a little bit easier for you, because I do know how hard these pews can be, especially without any, uh, any padding on them at the moment, again, for obvious reasons.
Dear friends in Christ, in the name of Christ and his church, I bid you welcome to St Michael and St Wolfad's today. We come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to prepare for the celebration of the festival of Christmas. In this service we hear and receive the story and message of the birth of Christ and we offer to God our thanksgiving in our joyful listening to carols. But first of all we pray for all Christian people that by this festival they may be renewed to fulfil Christ's work in the world. For the world which is already Christ's, that those who bear responsibility for its future in politics, in industry, in commerce, in education and in the mass media may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom and peace everywhere. For all in special need, the sick, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful and the bereaved. We commend all whom we love, or who have asked for our prayers, to the unfailing love of our Heavenly Father, and pray together as Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sit for our first reading. Light comes in creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, but it was good. And God divided between the light and the darkness. And God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the middle of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse, and divided the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heavens, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together to one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so.
second reading is also from Genesis. The writer tells of the fall of mankind. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Is it so that God has said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasing to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband, and he ate. And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made girdles for themselves. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God in the middle of the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I am naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave to me to, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every animal of the field. You shall go upon your belly, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel.
prophet Isaiah foretells the coming redemption and the shoot goes out from the stump of Jesse and the branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and he is made to breathe in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge according to the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and shall decide with uprightness for the meat of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips. He shall slay the wicked, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his heart. Also the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the cub lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox and the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the earth.
shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem the wise men three came many miles and journeyed long for you and to the place at which you were their frankincense and gold and myrrh they gave to you and cried out hallelujah hallelujah
The Mystery of God's Incarnation, according to St. Luke. And it happened in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenia was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee to be taxed, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David. And he took Mary, his betrothed wife, being with child. While they were there, the days for her deliverance were fulfilled. And she brought forth her son, the firstborn, and wrapped him, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God. the visit of the shepherds. And in the same country, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came on them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were grievously afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not fear, for behold, I give you to you good news, tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For you is born today in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord, and this is a sign to you. You will find the babe 
wrapped lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. And it happened as the angel departed from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Indeed, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And hurrying, they came and sought out both Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. St. Matthew tells of the visit of the angel to Joseph. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was this way, for his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. But Joseph, her husband-to-be, being just and not willing to make her a public example, he purposed to put her away secretly. And as he thought upon these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take to you Mary as your wife, for that in her is fathered of the Holy Spirit, and she shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this happened so that might be fulfilled that which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall conceive in her womb, and will bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel which, being interpreted, is God with us. 
And Joseph, being roused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took his wife, and did not know her until she bore her son, the firstborn, and he called his name Jesus. since lost, 
restoring joy to the world. Redeem our souls and bodies, O Christ, and so possess us as your shining bright. By your first coming make us righteous, at your second coming set us free, so that when the world is filled with light and you judge all things, we may be clad in spotless robes and follow in your steps, O King, into the heavenly world. Good and gracious God, you know how much fills our minds and hearts these days. Help us to pay attention to your presence in our lives. Help us to look for and to find opportunities this Advent to become more aware of how you touch our lives every day. May we become ever more the sign of your love in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. O oh God our Father, we are preparing to celebrate the birthday of your Son Jesus Christ. While we recall his coming as a tiny baby in weakness and humility, may we be reminded that one day he will come in great power and glory. We make this prayer to you through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for our troubled world, we pray for peace that, and goodwill that will break out everywhere. We pray that all who work for peace will see their labours rewarded for all mankind. We pray for all the care agencies, we pray for our NHS as they struggle during this pandemic. We pray that we will see your love is for us, for us all, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, as we celebrate again the festival of Christmas, we ask you to make us humble and loving like Jesus, who did not come to be served, but to serve, and who said that it is better to give than to receive, so that in his name we may devote ourselves to the care and service of all who we need. We make this and our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. St. Matthew relates how all nations come to worship him. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east to, to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, inquired of them exactly what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, so that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And seeing the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Thank you. 
we stand to hear how St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not anything was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This one came as a witness, to bear witness concerning the light, that all might believe through him. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. He was the true light. He enlightens every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave to them authority to become children of God, to those who believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but were born of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now we've heard a lot about prophets and from prophets this afternoon, but if someone had prophesied to you 12 months ago that at the 2020 service of Nine Lessons and Carols you would be wearing a muzzle, sitting two metres apart and having to listen to recorded music instead of singing, you'd probably have said, <laughs> yeah, right, or something similar. <laughs> Yet here we are, muzzled, spaced, anxious, Maybe more so now than in previous times of restriction. Maybe even scared of what the future holds for us as a town in general, and ourselves in particular. Now just cast your minds back 2,000 years to first century Palestine, where another prophecy is about to be fulfilled. This time it's an angel who pops up and says to a young girl, possibly of just 14 or 15 years of age, you're going to have a baby. She might have responded by saying, if she spoke Hebrew, Ken Miad, or if she spoke Aramaic, He Biaminia, with apologies to students of those languages. But they both roughly translate as, <laughs> yeah, right. But fortunately, she didn't. Imagine how she would have felt. Anxious, scared even. To some extent, she too would have been muzzled in the context of her country being under the Roman occupation and thus being unable to share widely her good news, our good news. News of great joy, news of great mirth, news of our dear Saviour's birth, as the Sussex Carol puts it. So don't let the fact that we can't sing this Christmas, don't let that detract from your joy. We've had a lot of the decision making taken out of our hands in the last 36 hours or so about whom we can see and when and where and for how long. But we didn't have to decide to bear the saviour of the world, did we? No, because he bears and forbears us. He brought us hope, just as the COVID vaccine has brought us hope. He brought us peace, as we still pray for peace. But most of all, he brought us joy. Because joy is not necessarily the absence of suffering. Joy is the presence of God with us. And so we pray, O oh come, O oh come, Emmanuel.
and to finally give you the Christmas blessing, but before that to say a very big thank you to everybody who has made this service possible. I'm quite sure you will appreciate that uh, it has not been a simple matter. There have been intensive cleaning, intensive preparations, intensive recording, and even my poor long-suffering wife recording all the services up to this point. But we do want to say amongst those a very big thank you to all of them and for everybody who's contributed to this service, reading, playing, humming, whatever. And of course to wish you all a most blessed and happy Christmas in this the strangest of years. So Christ who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with the grace and sweetness of his inward peace and give you joy and hope in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this Christmas time and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.